Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of One Shot Reviews. Now this week we were reviewing As the Gods Will, which is kind of been brought up a little bit lately in popular culture because people think that some scenes from Squid Games were a copy off of this movie and the manga series that it's based on. I personally don't really think so. I will talk about any things that are similar in this review, but really they're just two similar ideas that were came up came about on their own. Like I have zero doubt in my mind that it is a rip-off in any shape, way, shape, or form. Uh, with that said, I already mentioned that this was based on a manga series, which I actually was able to read online. It has like a different title like in Japanese that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. And it's by Munyuki Kanshiro, something along those lines. I couldn't quite find a right pronunciation online. And it was it's in two volumes, but the first volume is a lot shorter. It was from 2011 to 2012, and that is what this movie is based on. So that's all I read. There's also another one from like 2013 to 2016, I think. And that volume is just so much longer. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I could do both volumes and get ready for this review. But I actually kind of enjoyed the manga series, so I didn't really want to rush it. But I wanted to get this review out. And since this movie has nothing to do with the second volume, I'm just not going to even talk about it. Besides saying that I will read it, but I will not do a review on it because no one wants to hear me talk about manga because I don't really know what I'm talking about. As the Gods Will came out in 2014, so the, even though it started after the second volume was coming out, it would have been filmed pretty much before anything from volume two was really talked about. So this does not have like the end game of the final, like whatever the plot of the manga series built up to. This has none of that knowledge and is before all that. And they're just trying to condense this first manga series into a two-hour movie. And it's directed by Takishi Miike, which is a huge director from Japanese cinema. I personally like his more horror-oriented stuff, but he has done some, more, some fantasy. He has done all kinds of things. And he is a very interesting director to watch because of the just the weird things that come out of his mind. And after hearing about, oh, he made an adaptation of As the God's Will, and after reading the manga, I was like, okay, I can actually can kind of see where he's coming from with this, and I think it would be a great pick for it. I don't know if there would be a better director out there. And I will get to my opinion of it in a moment. So I'm going to go through the entire plot except for the endings, because I don't want to spoil it, and I will let you guys know things I like about it and things I don't like about it, and then I'll tell you my final opinions at the end. So, this is kind of broken up into games in a way. There are different games that they go through, kind of like the Squid Game, where they have to survive different things going on, and it's not quite as like linear as a Squid Game was, but th there is pretty distinct games that they have to go through, and pretty much it's just going from one game to the next. The main character is Takahata Shun, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and he is someone who is a high schooler who believes that his life is super boring and he wants something to happen. Well, he shows up to school, and his teacher's head explodes, and out comes a Dharma doll, which I will throw up a picture of so you know what I'm talking about, that then throws him into a game of red light, green light. And if you turn around or make any move at the wrong time, your head will explode with marbles and you die because that's kind of what happens when your head explodes. So right off the bat, that is probably the main thing that people are saying Squid Game copied off of because their first one was Red Light, Green Light. It is portrayed in completely different ways, with completely different types of people, in different places. This one's in a school classroom, and I really don't see the similarities between it because like the Dharma doll is also kind of taunting them in a way, and that whole angle with Squid Game just doesn't exist. So is this... Takahata Shun notices that like a lot of people start dying and he has to press the button on the Dharma doll before he turns around and he gets in the nick of time. Now my favorite thing about this manga series that the I guess this movie carried over not to the same extent but they definitely did is how willingly they're able to kill off people that they first build up as going to be a much bigger character. So for example in the manga series the Takahata Shun's best friend, and then also like this girl that like they kind of had a crush on, they like die instantly. But the the first few pages kind of make it seem like they're going to be the main character. And the same thing happens to like this uh, head boy in their classroom. He makes it to the very end with Takahata, but then since Shun pressed the button, the other guy dies. And you, they, they he's even seen in some flashback scenes. 
and you think that he's going to be a main character, but then they just kill him off, and I love when movies do that. It kind of hampers character development, because only one character really is keep going, while all these other ones that you kind of develop just die, so there's no time to develop everyone. And also, this movie doesn't quite do it to the same extent. The best friend and like the girl they kind of like in the first chapter, they're not talked about in this at all, just like the first boy is. And when they kill him off, it's actually interesting, because even though it happens just like in the manga, where he... Uh, Shun pressed the button, so therefore he's the one that survives, and the other guy, even though he didn't move, his head explodes. They really play up that angle a lot, because like when he leaves the classroom and he meets up with this other girl that he that Shun likes, and she does become a main character. Spoiler. Um, it's kind of like they play up the angle of, oh my god, like I was the one to press the button and all these other people died. Like I'm the one who kind of inadvertently killed all these other people. And in the manga series, even though that is kind of like the way it was, they don't linger on that whatsoever. They're not like, oh, I'm the reason that these people are dead. They're like, oh, we survived this. Do we have to do more? And it takes on a whole different angle, which I actually kind of enjoyed. I wish the manga series played it up more. And I will point out that th up until this point, this manga series is picture perfect for what the movie is doing. So it is a direct adaptation so far. Uh, they go into the second one, which is a giant cat in the gymnasium, and the people dressed up in mouse costumes, and they have to scratch the cat's back before they are dead. And they can only hear the cat if they have the mouse ears on. However, if they have this mouse costume on, they are targeted by the cat. Might sound like that doesn't make any sense, and it's because it doesn't make any sense. You're right. So I also want to point out that, well... First off, in order to get past the cat, they have to put this bell that looks just like a basketball through a hoop on its neck. This is another time when they build up a character you think is going to be important. There's this kid who gets like this really quick backstory about how he practices his whole life to be good at basketball. And he takes a shot, and the cat just knocks it out of the way and kills him. And it is so cool. It was done better in the manga. I think they built him up more. But... In the movie, they do kill him off, and you, you thought at first he was going to be important, but nah, let's kill him too. So they also beat it by doing some different stuff in the different like ways to beat these puzzles than in the manga series, but it keeps the same spirit alive and still very faithful. Uh, and this is also when we're introduced mainly to the, I guess, villain of the story, which is Amaya. He's just another student who just really wants to kill people and is okay with beating them up and has no a total disregard to humanity. He shows up and kills some people, but then this knockout gas happens, and they all go sleepy by. One thing that I like about this a little more than a manga series is that this villain, Amaya, he's a lot less cartoony. Like, he was really over the top in the manga series, and this one, he just seems much more grounded, and I get where he's coming from more. And this is where we come to the first two problems I have with this whole adaptation. Problem one is that there is less time spent on the outside world. Yes, we get some flashbacks early on, and we see a little bit of stuff that's happening, like news broadcasts and whatnot, but I really don't think enough is built up about like the insanity that should be going on outside of these games that are happening. Which, again, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, just, I think it was a bad move on their part. Maybe it was stuff was cut out for pacing, but it doesn't destroy the movie for you. However, my second problem is that this is in a much smaller scope than the manga series. Now, I'm going to talk about this in a second, but in the manga series, Shun meets up with all these other people from other schools, and then they slowly start to come together, and you can see all these different pockets of people, and you can just see everything going on, that they're just one small school. In this movie... Yes, they meet up with people from other schools, but then, like, this core group of people just stay stagnant, and you don't see what else is happening, which is very disappointing. I really like that in the manga series, because it was like, there's more going on than just what Shun is doing. In this, it feels like what Shun is doing is, like, the center of attention. So that's something that they did wrong that I think really kind of impacts the flow of the story. What happens from there, after they get knocked out, they go to a giant cube in the sky, which, in the manga series, they are all over the world, in this one, you really kind of just see the one that they're in. Now, while they're in this cube, they wake up, and these dolls show up that, while you have a blindfold on, they go in a circle, and you have to guess which one is behind you from the sound of their voice, and people keep getting it wrong, so they get, like, laser-eyed and bash their head on the ground. Fun stuff. And Sean obviously figures out a way to beat this puzzle, and then they go into the hallways, and 
meet up with some new people and they find a way to go to the next floor by teaming up. They need like seven people because they need seven, seven keys to go through it. What's kind of disappointing from here on out is that the manga series is completely thrown out the window and they go in their own direction. Now, in the manga series, instead of waking up in the cube, they wake up in this hospital and the cube appears above, so they have to go through the hospital and then go up into the cube and you see more people. And there's also a game of, like, jump rope that they have to beat. All of that's kind of thrown out the window, but it kind of streamlines the story a bit and gets them into the cube faster, which, totally fine. However, problem three is, it has nothing to do with the manga. And I mean, like, nothing. The next thing that happened in the manga is that they have, like, this tug-of-war game where all these people, the different groups that came out of the cube together, they have to, like, pull to one side and... If they win, other people die. You also are introduced to way more characters that die and follow that same suit of developing characters just to kill them off. And it's very... It's very disappointing that they don't do that at all. Now, if they did, I could see Squid Game, that whole, like, hey, they copied off it because there's this whole tug-of-war thing going on, and it was kind of similar, but this adaptation doesn't do any of that at all. Also, I forgot to note is that there's another girl that Shun meets up with that kind of forms this love triangle where she is someone that she, he used to be friends with and kind of had a crush on. But really, the, the triangle doesn't go anywhere, and I'll get to that. In the manga series, they had that tug-of-war I mentioned. What we get here is an ice skating bear that's kind of in stop motion, but he's like supposed to be in this weird kind of stop motion-y thing. And he says, I don't like when people lie, so I'm going to ask you guys a question. If everyone answers the truth then you can live. I don't know where that came from. Now, I like two things about this, and it's really the same thing that I kind of like and I kind of don't like, is this one, they find out someone is lying in all of these questions, so they have to pick out who they think the liar is, and it immediately breeds distrust between these seven people. I like that, it kind of builds up this, I'm not sure who to go with, not sure who to put my allegiance behind. At the same time, Unlike the manga, where we were able to see these people develop and it slows down for a bit, so you can see the friendship starting and people kind of hating each other, this one they go straight to, like, I hate you and I can't stand you and no development whatsoever. Which is disappointing. Again, I wish they would have went with the manga series. It was weird, but it was something. This is interesting, but I don't like it ultimately. Uh, and then the girl that, like, he met up with in the cube that he hadn't seen forever, she dies. Yeah, you get smashed by the bear because people think she's lying, which goes against what happens in the manga. But again, I'm okay with people, like, different characters doing different things. So then, for the fifth game, they kind of do a little bit of what was in the manga, but they do it in a completely different way. In this one, there's a bunch of nesting dolls and it's like, weird, torn down, like, medieval-like city. It's inside the cube still. I don't know what's going on. And while they are there, the nesting dolls say, hey, one person has to pretty much puppy dog this can, and everyone else needs to run away. If this guy finds you in his game of hide-and-seek, you go to jail. If you kick the can, you get out of jail. So, really, as you would guess, it comes down to Shun and Amaya, and Shun wins. Now, before I talk about it any further, I would like to say that, though I like that Amaya is less cartoony, he is played as, played as a pure villain in this, well, at the same time in the manga, even though he was this insane psychopath, he is on their team and he accepts that he's on their team and he stays loyal to them and tries to help them out the best he can. Which is not what they do in this one. He's just immediately the antagonist. So I guess they kind of needed like a, someone to like channel all of your like uh, this is the bad guy energy to instead of just the games at large. But I don't think it worked too well. And ultimately, even though Sean wins, they found out that it was just for fun, that whole, like, kick the can thing. Yeah, no one's actually dead. But then there's a game of luck, where they kind of, like, get popsicles, and they eat the popsicles, and they find out on the sick, like, oh, I survived, or no, I died. And then that's when the girl dies. And I really won't talk about more from there, but again, that's different than what happens in the manga series. In the manga series, they get off of this cube, and... They then join up with everyone else who survived every cube, and they go into, like, this weird Olympics game, which didn't even do. Now, some other things that the manga series had that this movie kind of attempted to do was to show this person who is, like, studying mangas and comic books 
on the outside world and also watching all these news broadcasts going on. And he's like, okay, I see a similarity here, and I'm going to try to uncover what's going on. I'm assuming in the second volume, that storyline is continued. So I was okay with the volume ending like that. However, in this, they kind of show this guy every now and then that takes up that part. And then in the end, he like goes off and just leaves. Like he's probably going to be doing like what happens at the end of the manga. But he doesn't end up doing any of that. This movie doesn't have a sequel. It makes no sense. So ultimately, it is a terrible addition to this movie. Maybe they expected to make a second movie. I don't know if it did well or not. But the fact that it's in there and we... We're not getting a sequel to this movie. It's been too long. No one really cares. It's like, why was that included? It's also like, the guy who runs the cube is God. In the manga series, he's like, he's portrayed as someone who might not actually be God, but he is so powerful and they're going to try to find a way to stop him. In this, you kind of just take it at face value that, oh, this might be God. So I ended up kind of spoiling most of the ending. There's some stuff I didn't include, but ultimately, this feels like there should be a sequel. No sequel exists. We're left hanging, and ultimately it makes this movie just kind of hard to watch because there is no conclusion. As you guys probably can surmise, is that I didn't really like this movie. I kind of like the atmosphere of this movie a bit. I love the manga series that it's based on, which even though it was really weird, there were some awful things from the manga th that I'm glad they didn't include, like the Shun and the other girl realizing that they, like, are obsessed with, like, hentai, which is, like, pervert in Japanese, and they're, they, like, get sexual gratification from being part of these, like, life or death situations. I don't know. Not, not that, wasn't in the movie. Thank God. But I really think they should have followed the manga more, or at least condensed it, but kept the same things alive, and the scope was just too small. I It really felt like only Shun and his group of people were the only important people going on. And it was so much better when there was like other things going on. So, do I recommend this movie? I had fun. I don't think it was a bad movie, and I don't think it's a movie that you wouldn't enjoy watching if you like uh, anime adaptations. Uh, even though this is based on a manga, it has the same vibe to it, obviously. I just don't think it's a great movie. If you're seeking it out because you're like, oh, I like Squid Games, you won't enjoy this. But if you are, if you like those off-the-wall anime adaptations, you probably would enjoy this, especially if you like horror stuff because it is very violent and it's fun to look at. But ultimately, it's not one of Takeshi Miike's best movies by far. Maybe one of his worst ones. And I... Don't really have much more to say about it than that. It's it's alright. If you want to watch it, watch it. But I can't give it, like, two thumbs up. I might give it, like, one that's kind of, like, sideways. But, you know, it's, a, it's at, like, a 45-degree angle. You're almost, you're almost halfway there.